Enigma asks, yeah, I was curious about how you guys handled the planning, um, city planning, NPC. So we came up with like, we came up with a pretty high level rough breakout initially. That way we, we know, we, we know the districts and we know certain areas, right? Like the tannery here and then things related to the tannery and temple travelers district. We had a rough idea, um, that was like very high level. Then we basically started moving through and breaking that down a little bit more and blocking it out. And then as we're blocking things out, we get a feel for the space and kind of what we're liking about the blocking, not liking about the blocking, things that need to move, have feedback. Like right now we've got, uh, when we first started, it was very like grid, kind of set up on a grid. And now looking at we've got what we've got in, Harrison's coming in and starting to see how he's broken up the road and stuff. So just kind of doing it in increments because the way that you would think the best way to do it would be to sit down and really like draw out every building and put every NPC in every building and, and go, okay, here is the, here's the detailed um, breakdown for art. Now art, go ahead. I think that can work. I've literally never been on a project that was that precise. Um, and what I've found instead is it's probably a little better and uh, will lead to less complete rework to just kind of come in and iterate at like a high level and a little bit lower level of detail, a little bit lower level of detail, a little bit lower and just kind of iterate through like that, especially since we'll find something like, all right, what does this building actually look like? What, it, you know, what feel does it have? How much room does it need, etc. Trying to figure out all of that out up front is it's just front loading so much work as opposed to um it's just it, you you front load all this work and then what if you start changing your mind? How does that ripple back out through all the work that you did, etc.? So yeah, and, and it because it's also one of those things where we may come in and then there have been a number of things that we've discovered as we're doing this, we're like, oh, but really, do we want to have this here? Or, hey, we may actually want to, we're thinking about co collapsing all of this story into this little bit here. Or, oh, we thought this would be grander, or we thought this would be smaller. And then now that we see it bigger, or now that we see it smaller, we like it better. So it's just, to me, it's, you might as well accept that you're going to be iterative in that way and kind of see what happens. And the other thing too is, it's hard to front load that much work when like, when Hamad, when Pattis and others, they don't, they, they've got other jobs and stuff. They don't have the time to like sit down and like just spend, you know, weeks of eight hour days plowing through this to get it prepped. So if we had tried to go that route, then we'd be still sitting here looking at an empty map. So front loader work you can't really engage in. Um, that's not shared. Uh, I'm sure it made sense on like Mario where they uh, perfect graded out, but now pipelines, uh, what they are, it seems iterative group work is away. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So there, you know, it's, there are a number of things where it, it feels counterintuitive, but I mean, sometimes I'm just real shit at articulating all of the various sort of variables or inputs that being, are being considered when we make decisions. But trust me, the decisions are being made a certain way for a certain reason, even if the reason's sort of a byproduct of kind of more rapid cognition and experience than it is like me sitting down and like being able to deconstruct the formula for you perfectly. But as we talk about this stuff and you ask questions, it helps me sort of articulate it. So that's nice. Um, and then some of it, I mean, some of it just comes down to like, unless we're just insanely badass and can just picture the perfect city up front when we, when we first start, right? Like we benefit from this idea of being able to look and go, oh, you know what? And it's like superficial stuff like, oh man, wouldn't it be cool if we had more minarets? Or what if, you know, we need something bigger over here. Let's move something over here instead of inventing something new. A certain way for a certain reason quietly hides the Magic 8-Ball. No, it's an app. I just have an app on my phone, my Magic 8-Ball app. Belfaster said, I think I'd use grocery stores a little bit as inspiration here. You know how they put meat, dairy, and produce in the furthest corners of the store? Not an accent but you may be able to use a little bit of that to keep the main POIs not stacked on top of each other and also keep players moving past other things you want them to interact with, beer, snack, um, in a grocery store example. No, th I mean, I think that's a really beautiful example. There will always be a bit of that. And, and it's funny, that's one of the reasons why, here, let me put on my gem. We have more NPCs distributed than we do sort of built out locations already, right? So all these numbers are NPCs or 
spawn volumes. That was to help start to get a feel for that. And also as we start to layer in more content, um, make us actually have to go to those locations, right? Um, instead of having all of our spell vendors or spell and ability vendors lined up, now we actually have to run to them or, you know, just create the items. Um, to just kind of start to get a feel for the content density. And we can already see, all right, well, it's way more dense here than here. And then we'll be keeping that in mind as we start to build that out. But things to consider here too, will be um, kind of the district specific content that will quest NPCs and other stuff that will start to come online. But yeah, we can look at it and go, all right, well, that's pretty dense, but that's also because a lot of what you're seeing there are the guards that are up there. We don't really have many guards and other sort of like citizens or that type of NPCs moving around here yet. We're gonna build out these docks, like the harbor area and then this waterfront district and then this whole area on the right hand side of the screen is an adventure space the river bend will be more of a play space uh, with factions in there um we've talked a little bit about <clears throat> basically the inclusion of more factions within within here so we've we've got some fun stuff coming online with the player uh, class factions but then it'll be cool to have some additional additional factions within like the market area got some ideas for uh some conflict there and where the lore at where can i get started oh it's slowly making its way into game you feel like night harbor will be a game in and of itself well i mean night harbor is the cornerstone of the proof of concept so we may find that we've just you know we we've either bitten off more than we can chew we'll figure that out maybe it's too much maybe it's a great sort of example especially once we have a better feel for what it took to make it and get some lessons learned it'll maybe it'll be a good example of what to expect with the other cities um but depending on how we approach the full roll into live roll into soft launch or whatever we're going to wind up defining it as it will probably make sense that we have a decent amount of play space for the proof of concept uh because one thing and this is me just riffing. Um, so it's, you know, it's something that's got to be discussed with the team more. But one of the things that I keep thinking is um, if we wanted to get folks into the game and give them a playable game that's worth giving us some money for, uh, one way to do it would be to make a, a decent size but doable, achievable proof of concept region that is fully playable but it's limited to that region, right? And so there's a finite amount of content, um, but we're hoping it's a it's a decent amount of content. If you look at the other zones we've talked about here, some of those may change, um, but if you look at Night Harbor, the Nubi Yards, Shaded Dunes to the west, the Strand to the north, the Glass Flats beyond that, Vale of Zintar beyond the Shaded Dunes. We've got Fallen Pass, Fallen Watch Dungeon. We've got our dungeon that's already online, here in Wormsbane, we're expanding that. So it'll be, you know, kind of, I think the thought is to go guck AB and see what we can do to expand dungeons. The sewers that are gonna be below here, there's more dungeon, lots more dungeon stuff for Night Harbor or Night Harbor region that we over time wanna have come online. Cause again, we want, we want the game to grow in depth as well, literally. So I think we'll have enough content that is, uh, can keep people busy for a significant number of levels if they're okay with staying in the same region and sort of playing the same content and maybe moving to alts and all of that and then what we would do is over time expand the world and release that right and so we'd be working on the rest of the world while allowing you know access and playability to just a smaller chunk of the world and people know all of the lore and all the details and all the secrets in this part of the world will gain all of the information with regards to how the classes are working and how the gameplay feels and spells and abilities and all that stuff. So we can really refine and, and um, make the game a lot bigger while working on the other content that will then later be a surprise for folks. Has any more iteration been done on the deep zone? Oh, I forgot to mention the deep and that was like top of mind when I first started doing the breakout. Yeah, so we haven't done any more work on the deep zone and there's, I would say, there's that zone to work on a bit and also populate. I was thinking about deep camps the last couple of days, to be honest, because um, I was thinking about them in relation to some of the lore we were talking about with newbie yards and other stuff with the beetles and things. And 
also with some uh, different NPCs that are being concepted. So is it still kind of the plan to have as much deep content as overworld content? Over time, yes. That, that would really be nice to be able to pull off. And that's where I was kind of hesitating a second ago, where it's like, we've got the one deep zone. We may find that it's not enough as we get in there and start to flesh it out, because essentially it's another outdoor zone. It just happens to be under, under the ground. As we start to flesh that out, then we'll be looking at, you know, do we add another one? And who will dominate the deep underground and why will it be gnomes? Weasel Blighter, nice to have you in here. Usually people are just shit talking gnomes the whole time. So it's nice to have somebody that actually respects the gnomes. 